Welcome to May, everyone. It's here. The peak month of tornado season has finally arrived. As promised, it's time for an update on my spring 2019 tornado forecast from way back in January. In this episode, we'll discuss what has happened so far, what we might expect in May and June, and what the summer might have in store for severe weather. First, a review of some of the predictions or expectations I made in January about the months of April through June of this year. A weak El Nino will settle in for spring. Yes, this absolutely did happen. The Climate Prediction Center officially declared a weak El Nino, or three consecutive three-month periods, with oceanic Nino index temperatures above half a degree Celsius. Okay, cool. We're doing okay so far. We will maintain drought-free or reduce drought conditions across the Southwest. We didn't just reduce the drought, we killed it. In the 20 years since the creation of the U.S. Drought Monitor that produces these maps was created, there has never been so little drought in the contiguous United States. This one gets an exclamation point. This was not expected. Only minor changes or a modest reduction in drought conditions were expected by me. Western troughing should be easier to come by. We got the western troughing and we got it with an exclamation point. The first big one was the Nebraska bomb cyclone that resulted in fierce flooding. Dams broken, levees broken, some towns completely submerged. And to this day, Interstate 29 in Southern Nebraska is still closed. Unfortunately, these did not result in severe weather because they came much too early and too far north for this time of year. Still, severe weather did make an appearance several times in the Southwestern Plains states and deep south throughout March and April. This year should be about average for tornado counts. So far, we are hugging really close to that average line. However, just four months into the year with peak season still on the way, there's no way to tell for sure this will hold one way or the other. An active April and May in the more western half of the southern and central high plains. April did not produce the activity I expected, nor similar to analog years, or at least not so much in the area I thought it should be. Then again, about a month later, we got another bomb cyclone in Nebraska. This one brought a late season blizzard to much of western Nebraska and South Dakota. But again, not enough moisture to bring tornado weather to the plains. It did result in some supercells and some damaging hail though. Uh, this time it was lack of moisture, not because it was so much too early in the season. Uh, by now it was late March. However, this, uh, this particular setup was preceded by a low pressure system that went through the southern Gulf states, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, and that swept away any moisture opportunities. I kept them way down in the Gulf of Mexico. And if you look at my climatology video, I mentioned how you need a high pressure system down in the Southeast United States to start the conveyor belt, to get moisture moving up into the plains. That way, when a low pressure system like the bomb cyclones in Nebraska uh, were to come into play, that moisture would already sort of be there and it could uh, do the rest of the job and bring that moisture in and maybe result in some severe weather. Still, there were tornadoes to be found in at least three productive, chaseable events, along with a few other low predictability tornadoes. If we go by hail reports, we can see that severe weather and especially supercells are happening. Now for a quick reminder from my last video, we can't predict tornadoes directly, only their precursors, supercell thunderstorms. In that respect, the activity has been there, but not the tornado threat. Instead of ridging or drought leading to low tornado counts in the southern plains, this time it was the lack of an eastern ridge. The aforementioned western troughing was actually a little too frequent, and many kept to the south, hugging just north of the Gulf of Mexico. As a result, Gulf and Caribbean moisture never really had a chance to make itself west or north in time for the next system. Several chances for severe weather on the plains were thwarted by a lack of moisture return. Unfortunately, this was yet another case, kind of like 2015, where there was too much of a good thing, just a different thing. Fewer than normal tornadoes over the Ohio and Mississippi valleys, and otherwise average for the rest of the country. I can't really make a strong case one way or the other without seeing what May has to hold. While April traditionally does bring tornadoes to this area, they were for the most part outside of these areas. If anything, this area was weak and counts for the opposite reason I thought they would be. Systems should have either been shunted close to the Gulf or pushed north towards the Great Lakes. Instead, they have been tracking right through southern Dixie Alley. The most likely reason for this is a lack of a southeastern ridge, which based on my analog years mentioned from the previous video, should have been there. 
there's outbreak potential across the Corn Belt. Since we haven't quite made it to the time of year when I expect some high impact tornado event to occur, this hasn't happened yet. Several high impact events like the March bomb cyclone that led to devastating floods in Nebraska and the mid-April blizzard across Colorado and Nebraska didn't have the necessary moisture on the warm side to work with. The few chances for this outbreak possibility to occur might have been blown, but spring is just getting started. So it's almost May and we've seen a few months of what 2019 has been up to. What has this done for our analog years? Previously, I mentioned some good matches, 1980, 1991, 1995, 2004, 2007, and 2015. How are those holding up? Right now, the most similar years left are 2015, 2007, and 1995. But some similarities to 2010 are creeping in now as well, specifically with the late start to spring. Going strictly based on how March and April went, 2019 is absolutely unique and nothing like 2018 at least. Other analog years though, definitely had more activity in March and April in the High Plains, and less frequent activity in the southern US than 2019 so far. To review, 2015 was an active year, but was difficult for storm chasers due to sloppy wet systems and difficult tornadoes shrouded in rain or secondary targets overperforming primary chasing targets. 2007 was a well below average year, but with legendary tornadoes. But 2010 is considered to be one of the best storm chasing years in recent memory, in spite of a slow start. And if 2019 were to play out the same way, this June would be a very interesting month to watch. So now that April is coming to a close, what does May and June have in store? Now that we are close enough and into the thick of spring, we can transition away from seasonal forecasting to sub-seasonal and weekly forecasting. At this range, we can keep the background state in mind. In other words, no drought concerns in a weak El Nino. But now we need to pay attention to sub-seasonal variations more closely. This is where we get into an alphabet soup poured over a plate of spaghetti. Oh, that looks disgusting. I'm not going to totally ruin your day with technical stuff, but I'm going to point out a few highlights. Generally speaking, these oscillations represent either changes in pressure over various areas of the globe, or differences in the amount of thunderstorms such that come from monsoons, or areas of ocean temperature that are more or less than average. If you want to know more, I'll link some information in the description of this video. The two subseasonal oscillations I want to highlight though are the AAM and the MJO. The simplest description of MJO is an increase in thunderstorm activity that then translates across the earth affecting regional weather patterns, or sometimes not. Atmospheric, angular momentum on the other hand, is a measure of global atmospheric wind speeds relative to Earth. Well, it's more complex than that. The motion of the atmosphere around the Earth, combined with mountains, valleys, oceans, and plains, can ever so slightly alter the Earth's rate of spin. But because of the law of conservation of momentum, that energy doesn't disappear. When global winds speed up, the Earth must slow down and vice versa. But don't worry, you won't need to adjust your watch because it's windy. The change in the Earth's speed is tiny and everything balances out. But we can, however, measure this change in the atmosphere, either with a positive or negative total value. When global AAM builds up, it means that at some point it's going to have to drop back down and balance out again. And when it does, and especially when combined with a strong signal in the Madden-Julian oscillation over the Indian Ocean, this should mean western troughing, active weather patterns across the central United States, and a ridge building in the eastern US. Both of these signals are popping up right at the middle of May through early June. Now again consider the background state. ENSO favors western troughing already. A drop in AAM favors jet stream activity. Indian Ocean convection events, like the one in the forecast, also favor an uptick in weather over the central United States. And it's all happening right in the heart of severe weather and tornado season. Now for comparison, effectively none of these signals occurred in 2018, and definitely not together. Okay, so now we know our background states. We know generally that the month of May and perhaps even June have some subseason conditions favorable for severe weather. What about the near term? What's going on in the next few weeks? Victor Jensini, 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 professor at Northern Illinois University, has a long range tornado website where he uses global forecasting tools and makes an educated guess at the upcoming severe weather over the next few weeks. He's been locking in on mid and late May as being particularly active. Check out his webpage for his thoughts and updates throughout the rest of the season. You'll find the link below. As we approach May 1, we have some weekly forecasts and ensembles to look at going into early June. Even in the short term, 
things look quite interesting. If you just look at this map at face value and consider nothing else, May is going to be quite active. Generally speaking, a solid signature for severe weather in the central US would mean blue in the western United States and neutral to orange colors in the eastern United States. Ensembles are a grouping of different forecasts with different starting conditions and biases. Lastly, deterministic models show finite solutions for what might be expected over the next couple of weeks. Looking forward though, more than a few days has many disadvantages, as these forecasts change, sometimes dramatically with every run released six hours apart. However, there are consistent signals towards some sort of an active period sometime in early May. Once we get into the depths of May and early June, synoptic or large scale features start to be less important when determining severe weather and tornado potential. Instead, smaller features take over, and these are far less predictable from this distance. Regardless of what year or even background state, the very fact that it is hot and humid across much of the United States means potential exists virtually anywhere, and knowing where to go might have a day or two advanced lead time at most. That being said, the overall background state of El Nino, lack of drought, and the expected active pattern could enhance severe weather conditions well into June. So here's my final spring and early summer forecast update. Again, this isn't meant to be taken too seriously. Instead, treat it as an educated guess. At the end of spring, I'll provide an update of the highlights of this spring and early summer and give myself a full scorecard on how well I did. So please subscribe so you can watch me fail miserably. I'll be sure to catch as much of the action out there as I can when it happens, and I'll have more video to share right here. So wish me luck. Keep a watchful eye to the sky, and to those looking for twisting columns of water vapor, I'll see you out there.